Hello everybody! In this video I'm going to show you how to connect and configure a network file storage system for home or office use with the example of D-Link DSN 11010 and how to recover lost data from such kind of storage. Hello friends! If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you will be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. Regardless of how much storage space our computers have, we always need more. The issue of storing data is always relevant, for example, if you do some video editing, photography or other work that requires large volumes to store your data, or if you need to create a network attached storage for a small office. The solution you are looking for could be a NAS or SAN network storage, depending on your needs and opportunities. So before you can make your choice, let's have a closer look at the difference between the two and at how they work. A network attached storage, or NAS, is a device or server with a set of disks which is connected to a network. All members of such network can use the data stored on such device. The main difference from a conventional storage device which is connected directly to a computer is that in the case of NAS, the operating system and other software are designed to the only purpose – storing data. A storage area network, or SAN, is an architectural solution to enable external storage devices to be connected to servers in such a way that the operating system can recognize the connected network drives as local disks. SAN is a network designed to ensure connecting equipment and software to servers. It can transfer information from one storage device to another and help different servers to exchange information, which accelerates data backup and recovery processes. SAN accesses data at the block level. Its main input-output pro protocol is ISCSI, which is Small Computer System Interface. A computer sees such storage as its own local disk. ISCSI is a network protocol for working with data storage systems and it lets them interact with computers within a network. Such storage can be organized with almost any operating system because it is built on the logical level and doesn't require any special hardware for handling data, such as special disks or disk controllers. This feature is included into most operating systems and can be enabled easily. Windows is no exception, and it includes ISCSI components as extra elements. So what's the difference between the two approaches? In plain English, SAN is a network drive which enables data exchange in blocks, just as it happens with local disks. Meanwhile, NAS is a network file system and a resource with shared access. It is a kind of a file server which can be accessed through your home network. SAN is a block-based device delivered over the network, and NAS is a file system delivered over the network. So which way of storing data should you choose – NAS or SAN? The answer depends on your needs and opportunities, because these are two different configurations designed for different tasks. Access to files and shared use of information for apps on various server platforms within a local network choose NAS. High-speed block access to databases, consolidated storage with improved effectiveness and efficiency – go for SAN. Now, let's see how to configure such a storage system. As I said at the beginning of the video, I'll show you how to assemble and configure a SAN storage based on D-Link DSN 11010. First of all, assemble the storage, fix the drives in the base and then slide them in the, into the corresponding slots of the main case. That's actually all you need to do in terms of assembly. The final step is to connect it to a power outlet and to the network. To configure the SAN storage, you need to connect it to the network or directly to a computer with the help of a network cable. Plug one end of the cable into the management port of the storage and the other into the LAN port of the router. 
then plug in the power cable and connect it to the power outlet. If you choose to connect the storage directly to the computer, you'll need a network cable of a special type, known as crossover cable. For such connection type, you plug the other end of the network cable into the LAN port of your computer instead of the router. Turn on the storage system and wait until a LED light appears on the front panel. It means the server has booted. For primary configuration of the storage, you should open a browser on your computer, which is connected either to the network or directly to the storage. Type the network storage address in the corresponding line. This address is specified in the user's manual or other documents that come supplied with the storage. After that, the web assistant will start looking for it. When it's ready, let's get down to configuring. Accept the license agreement and set the administrator password. Enter IP address, subnet and gateway for the management port if the letter has to be modified, then click Next. Now you need to enter data port settings for the ISCSI connection. Alternatively, you can choose to specify them later and click Skip to email notification. In the next tab, you can enable and configure email support. When it's configured, the application will send you notifications about the storage status, errors and failures. Review the settings and if everything is correct, click Finish. If you need to change anything, just return to the previous window and edit the settings. That's all about primary configuration. In the next window, you'll be suggested to download and install Java. It is required for XTEC storage to work normally, and we are using this specific application to manage the storage. An Internet connection is required for the installation, so just click on this link and install the package. If your computer already has Java installed, click on the link below to download the XStack storage app. Add the application to exceptions, because Java may block it. Open the Start menu. Find Java Configuration, switch to Security tab and add the address. Confirm that you agree to run the application by checking this box and allow Java access in the firewall. After that, the XTEC storage application will start. To access the storage information and settings, enter the registration data, username and password. As you do that, the connection with the storage will be established. Now you need to create a disk and configure network access for it. Open Volume Creation Visit, give the volume name here and select Advanced Settings. If you need help in choosing the best way to organize your storage, check the first option. But if you know the exact details, select the second option and click Next. Choose a composition type, that is, the type of disk array. If you need to select specific disks, choose the second option here and find the disks you want to the list. Specify the size for the volume you are going to create. Finally, choose the corresponding ISCSI network access type. To all initiators, to an initiator from the list, 
to an initiator which is not on the list or no access at all. Next and finish. The volume has been created. If you haven't specified a network address to exchange data during primary configuration, do it now. Open Network Settings, right-click on the Ethernet port and choose Create Portal. Specify IP address, subnet, gateway and click OK. Below, you can enable or disable administrator rights for this portal. Now the storage basic configuration is complete. The last step is to connect it to the computer. Later I'll go into details of the XTEC menu items. To configure the connection to the storage, plug the end of the network cable into the data port. On a Windows computer, use the search field to find ISCSI initiator. If you launch this application for the first time, the operating system will suggest to enable the corresponding service that would connect the disk every time the operating system boots. Here, give the path to the ISCSI network disk. Open the targets tab and enter the server address into this field. That is the address of the port where the data exchange is set up. Now hit Quick Connect, select the disk in the window that opens and click to connect it. If the connection was successful, the next step is to initialize the disk and assign a drive letter to it. You can do it in the Computer Management menu or in Disk Management. You can access it by pressing Start. Control Panel, Administrative Tools, Computer Management, or right-click on the Start menu and select Disk Management. When the initialization is over, the disk will be accessible as a local physical disk, but it won't be displayed in the Explorer yet. Right-click on it and select New Simple Volume. Specify the drive letter, File System, Next and Finish. Now the disk should appear in the Explorer and you can use it and transfer information there. This way, you can use ISCSI Initiator to connect a network drive to any computer within this network. Now, let's give a quick overview of the menu you can find in XTEC Storage. For a more detailed description, check the documents that come supplied with the storage device. In the File tab, uh, you can add a new connection or remove an existing one, log out, configure auto logon or exit the application. In the tab view, open volume settings to modify initiator access options, scan, destroy, grow or reconfigure the volume. In the System Administration tab, you can find many options to manage the server – restart, shutdown or restore to factory defaults. Also, you can add a user or modify the administrator's password. In Network Settings, you can add and configure one more portal or remove the existing one or create a group of ports to reduce the network load and increase its speed and so on.
in the Tools tab, you can customize the time display, run the volume creation wizard, or save event history. In addition, there are tabs containing detailed information about the disk, its status, settings, and so on. While you are configuring and managing the storage system, you may accidentally remove important information, format the disk, or recreate the volume and cause a loss of data. Even if it happened, don't worry. With the help of our data recovery tool, Hetman Partition Recovery, you'll be able to have them back. Hetman Partition Recovery lets you restore lost data from such disks without effort. The utility will scan the network drive, find the lost data, and help you save it in an easy and effective way. Here is what you do to get your files back. Step 1. Download, install, and run Hetman Partition Recovery. As you can see, the program has identified this disk type easily. Step 2. In the Drive Manager, select the disk, right-click on it, and choose Open. Try a fast scan first. It will take less time. If the fast scan can't find the deleted data, then go for a full analysis. Step 3. The File Recovery Wizard will scan the selected volume immediately and display the scan results in the right side of the program's window. Step 4. When the scan is over, all you need to do is to select the deleted files you want to restore and then click the Recovery button. Specify where to save the data and click the same button again to start recovering. Also, our program can create a disk image and then conduct all recovery operations with this image, which increases your chances to restore the deleted information successfully. Because, as we know, multiple rounds of scanning may result in data overwriting, which is certainly not what you'd like to face. You can use this program for data recovery in any of the following cases. To recover files lost after removing or formatting partitions, system errors, virus attacks, and other scenarios that involve loss of data. To recover data from internal and external hard disks, USB storage devices, SD memory cards, digital cameras, and other devices used to store information. To recover lost photos, videos, music, documents, and other file types. Summing up, now you know how to create your own network-attached storage and protect it against loss of data, and what to do if some information was lost, in spite of all your efforts. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Push the bell button to receive notifications and never miss new videos. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck!